So rather than do the uh, phase shift network, what I thought I'd do next is just a simple uh, signal strength meter using uh, ADC inputs to the Tiny Pico and the LCD. Uh, so it's not really an RF strength meter, uh, but instead it's just a component that will sample the audio strength, pass it to the microcontroller through one of the ADC pins, and then just display a simple bar chart on the LCD using user-defined characters based on the kind of the audio strength of the signal. Uh, for the moment, uh, in this portion, I'm going to directly sample the uh, uh, I signal after the preamps uh, on the circuit uh, over here that I built up uh, the other day. Uh, but later on, I'll probably be sampling further down the receive chain. So the first part uh, of uh, the challenge is coming up with a simple circuit. And let me just zoom right in here. A simple circuit uh, that protects the tiny Pico's uh, ADC pins from either over voltage or under voltage. So the, the tiny Pico is a three point, uses a 3.3 volt uh, micro microcontroller. And so you've got to make uh, super sure that uh, uh, the voltages that pass to the ADC pin are within uh, 3.6 volts at the very upper end and that they don't go much below a diode drop uh, on, the, on the low end uh, at, at zero volts. So you want to keep it uh, sort of 0.2 volts and above and uh, 3.6 volts at the very maximum. So the diagram that I'm showing you uh, is for a, from a reference link from, uh, from DigiKey called Protecting Inputs in Digital Electronics. Um, and I'll include a link to this below. And, and what you're seeing right now is figure 13, uh, which is for five volt uh, uh, microcontrollers, but it's easy, easily adaptable for three volt, 3.3 volt circuits. So just explaining it here. So here's the signal coming in here. Uh, this first diode here is a uh, Schottky diode uh, that keeps the voltage applied to the pin uh, uh, not so much above zero, but uh, not very much below zero. The idea with a shot key is uh, using a shot key is it has a very low forward voltage drop, as well as it's very fast uh, switching times. And then the, uh, so the second one here is, and again, this is for a five volt circuit. So there's a 4.7 volt Zener here, and its, uh, its uh, purpose is to clamp the upper end so that no more than 4.7 volts can appear at the, uh, the pin, the ADC pin of the microcontroller. So let's uh, just move on to, uh, to, 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 to actually my circuit here for the, for the tiny Pico. And I've got it right here. So, um, so we're getting an audio signal here. Uh, we don't really know what it's around and we don't care. So the first thing we do is run it through a decoupling capacitor. And then we... Uh, the next part is to apply uh, a mid-rail bias on it, and that's achieved with this 10K resistor divider here from 3.3 volts. Then I've got a, another 1K resistor going to the Schottky, and another 1K resistor going to a 3.0 volt Zener. And then finally into pin 33 of the, of the Tiny Pico. So let's see, uh, I've built this up on this uh, ever more crowded board here. I actually ordered an... <laughs> Another one of these. I'm running out of space on this board, but here's the uh, circuit set up on the uh, uh, on the breadboard here. So the incoming signal comes in th through here. Here's the decoupling cap. This is the 10k resistor divider connected at the top end to 3.3 volts, and obviously at the bottom end to ground. Here's the Schottky F1 uh, N5711. Here's the 1k res 1k resistor to the 3.0 volt, volt Zener. And here's the other 1K resistor, and then finally this goes off to pin 33 on the Tiny Pico. But what I'll do is I'll disconnect uh, it from the Tiny Pico, and we'll demonstrate to start with that it is indeed uh, protecting that pin by not letting the voltage go much below zero or higher than three volts. So let me hook it up to the oscilloscope and show you that. Okay, so let's uh, go through the test setup here. Uh, so I've got my uh, signal generator inputting a signal here, and this is where I've got the, you'll see it soon, the purple trace on the oscilloscope uh, connected to. I've got the yellow trace on the oscilloscope connected to this point, which is uh, the, the, the exact point that's uh, 
going to be input into the ADC pin on the tiny Pico. So here's my uh, signal generator down here. Uh, as you can see, it's set to 1.3 volts peak to peak at a 1 kilohertz uh, frequency. And so let's see the effect of uh, changing that uh, input voltage. Let me just pan up and then zoom into the oscilloscope. I'm uh, bumping the, uh, the uh, connections here. So you can see uh, there's a 1 kilohertz signal coming in here. And so this is measured at the the, what will effectively be the pin of the uh, the ADC pin. You can see that's between 1.78 volts and uh, 800 millivolts. Now, because I've got some uh, those two 1K resistors in there, there's, there's definitely there's bound to be some attenuation on that signal. But you can see that's well within the range of the of the ADC. Uh, but that would be expected anyway because we're only at a 1.3 volt signal. So let's see what happens when we go up to uh, let's say a three volt signal. Now you can see the top of the of the of the signal starting to flatten off. So here's the input signal here, and this and then this is the signal that's being presented to the ADC pin. And you can see here a maximum of 2.02 volts and a minimum of uh, is that a minus? Yes, minus uh, 240 millivolts. So obviously, if I didn't have that protection circuitry there we'd be seeing the full brunt of this. So let's go up again to 4.3 volts peak to peak. And now you can see really the signal starting to flatten off. So again, we've got minus, uh, minus 340 millivolts on the downside. And that's, as I mentioned, the voltage drop uh, across the shot key. And then at the top side, we've got 2.14 volts. So it's really restricting that, uh, that top side. And we can go up even further. But as you can see, the... Uh, the protection circuitry is uh, is uh, kicking in there and uh, preventing uh, unwanted uh, voltages get to the pin of the uh, of the ADC. Okay, so I've connected the um, uh, the output uh, to the uh, to pin thirty three on the tiny Pico, and let's just uh, check that out. Um, so so reading from an eighty from ADC. Uh, port on the uh, on the type Pico is is quite trivial. So you basically import pin and ADC those two libraries, and you declare your ADC to be on whatever pin, the ADC pin that you're running on. I believe there's about uh, I think there's about eight ADC pins uh, on the tiny Pico, and then finally uh, this command here uh, basically sets the range of voltages that it can read. So the default is really just between zero and one volt. Uh, and, and I want to expand that. This is the greatest you can do, uh, ADC.11 dB, and that provides you uh, pretty much the full range of the, the voltage you can apply to the port. So that's uh, between zero and 3.6 volts on the very upper end, and, and we're going nowhere near that. So, so basically then to, uh, to read it, you simply, um, bear with me, you simply do ADC read underscore u16 uh, and that returns a value between 0 and 65535 so this is one of those things that's kind of uh, this is kind of a machine machine generic version now the on the ESP32 the uh, ADC pins only have uh, 12 bits of resolution so that's really a number between 0 and 4095 so in order to really sort of normalize that to what you can get out of the uh, uh, ADC pins on the um, the tiny Pico. You divide the result by sixteen. So now uh, let's get into kind of sampling some of the results over time, and then we can graph the results on the um, on the, uh, Python that I have running on on my Pi. So let's put that in a loop. And again, I've got these in a pace buffer to uh, to help me. Oops, I've gone past the pace buffer. I have to type this in from memory here, so bear, bear with me. So I'm going to create a list that uh, contains the results. Uh, then I'm going to uh, basically, um, uh, for i in range, so I'm going to do for 300 times, I'm going to read uh, the ADC result into, and add it to the results list. So results, results, dot pen, adc.readu16 divided by 16. Oops. 
There we go. The results are now in in there. So what I can do is I can cut and paste these results. Bear with. I'm doing this all in real time here. Into I've got spider running here. Bear, bear with me. That's not spider. This is spider. So I've got spider running here. You can see I've done. I've, I've already done some of these before. So let me paste those results into spider. So now I've got all those uh, values that we read. And uh, let's make sure you can see that. Yeah, we can see that. So let's uh, plot those results. And you can see there's a very nice, uh, nice little uh, uh, sine wave being displayed there. So what I might do is, let me, just to prove that I'm not uh, faking it here, let me uh, uh, reduce the frequency from 1 cap kilohertz to 400 hertz. Let's go back to uh, the tiny Pico here, do the same thing. Uh, initialize the list. Blah, blah, blah. I'll remember the, uh, the closing parenthesis this time. So now we get results again. So this is a new set of results uh, at the 400, uh, 400 hertz frequency. I'll cut those into... And now when I run this, you should see a curve that has a lower frequency. And there we go. That's uh, basically at, at 400 hertz. So, and uh, you know, this is all reading ADC numbers. So you can see there's quite a, uh, quite a, a, a nice relationship between the frequency that I'm, between the signal I'm in, injecting in there and the output of the ADC. So next, uh, I'm going to move on to uh, sampling the uh, the output of um, uh, of the audio portion of the circuit, and uh, we'll gather some more results.